Hey, math enthusiasts, let's kick things off with this equation. x squared minus 5x plus 6 equals 0. What's the first thing that pops into your mind? Most of you are probably thinking, that's a quadratic equation, and you're absolutely right. But today, I'm going to call it something different, a quadratic series or even a product. Why? Because this video is all about exploring series and products, and we're going on a wild journey from this simple equation to finding the roots of e to the x. Buckle up because we're diving deep into some fascinating math. Let's start with our equation, x squared minus 5x plus 6 equals 0. This quadratic has roots at x equals 2 and x equals 3. That means we can write it as a product, x minus 2, x minus 3 equals 0. Why? Because if a times b equals 0, either a is 0, b is 0, or both. Since our equation equals 0, we can equate it x squared minus 5x plus 6 equals x minus 2, x minus 3. Now here's the cool part. Multiplication is just repeated addition. Think about it. 1 plus 2 plus 3 equals 6, which is the same as 3 times 2. So can we turn any series into a product? Let's generalize this. For any quadratic, ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0, with roots r1 and r2, we can write it as x minus r1, x minus r2. To clean it up, divide by a, the coefficient of x squared, to get x squared plus b over a times x plus c over a. This is our product in normalized form. This idea of turning equations into products of their roots is part of something bigger called the Weierstrass factorization theorem. It says any entire function, like a polynomial or even the sine function, can be written as a finite or infinite product of its roots. For example, the sine function has roots at n times pi, so Euler wrote it as an infinite product. But what about e to the x? Can we write it as a product of its roots? Here's the problem. In real or complex numbers, e to the x is never zero. So does it even have roots? Let's find out by getting a bit creative. Since e to the x doesn't have roots in the usual number systems, let's invent a new one. Imagine a number s equals a plus b times k where a and b are real numbers, and k is a special abstract symbol. Here's the key rule, e to the k equals zero, which means k is like the natural log of zero. We define it further, e to the n k equals zero to the n, where n is any real number. If n is positive, e to the n k equals zero. If n is negative, it's one over zero, which is undefined in standard math. And if n equals zero, we get e to the zero k equals zero to the zero, which is a bit tricky. Let's say it's one for now. This new system lets us define roots for e to the x. Now, let's assume e to the x equals 0 when x equals nk, where n is a positive integer, 1, 2, 3, and so on. This lets us write e to the x as an infinite product, starting from n equals 1 to infinity. e to the x equals c times the product of x minus nk. To find c, set x to 0, e to the 0 equals 1, so c times the product of minus nk equals 1. That means c is 1 over the product of minus nk. Simplify, and we get e to the x equals the product from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 minus x over nk. That's our infinite product for e to the x. Let's expand our product and see what we get. We have e to the x equals 1 minus 1 over k times the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n times x plus 1 over 2k squared times the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n squared minus the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n squared times x squared, and so on. Now, compare this to the Taylor series for e to the x, 1 plus x plus x squared over 2, and so forth. Let's match the coefficients. The constant term is 1 equals 1. Perfect. The linear term gives us 1 equals minus 1 over k times the sum of 1 over n from n equals 1 to infinity, so the sum equals minus k. That checks out if you think about the Taylor series for the natural log of 1 minus x, but the quadratic term, it says 1 over 2 equals 1 over 2k squared times the sum of 1 over n squared minus the sum of 1 over n squared. Simplify, and you get the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n squared equals 0. Hold on, that's weird because we know that sum equals pi squared over 6. So, why does our math say the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n squared equals 0? That's a paradox, because in standard math, this sum is pi squared over 6. Let's double check by taking the log of our product. x equals the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of the natural log of 1 minus x over nk. The question is, 
Did we mess up by using a countable set of positive integers for n when maybe we should have used all positive real numbers? Or is our new number system with k doing something strange? I want you to think about this and share your ideas in the comments.